You're listening to Party Nerds Weekly. Welcome to the party! <laughs> To make it short and sweet, we had a whole shitload of bad news this week. <laughs> <laughs> to say the least. Why? <laughs> Why? Well, well, let's just, let's just put it this way. The the whole act of being is that pretty much, okay, we are going to get the Snyder Cut. We know that. Yep. But now basically reigniting a lot of the, the drama and turmoil that this movie has caused is pretty much put into perspective by the returns of not only Amber Heard, not only Joe Mangianello, so that's Mira, and that's Deathstroke, but Jared Leto yes. is back as the Joker. Uh, well, all right, Th this is my problem with that. Now, I know most people, um, this is speaking for me, are not a big fan of Jared Leto. I mean, I, I look at it like- Not that Joker. Uh, uh, I beg to differ. No, no, even still, it's just like, all right, so now you get a second chance, you get a second chance for the travesty known as the Justice League. And so you would think, all right, let's make some different moves. You know, that's almost just like if J.J. Abrams was like, yo, I'm gonna be redoing the Street Fighter movie. We'd all be hyped, but then he's like, yeah, but I'm gonna cast Jean-Claude Van Damme as Guile. You're like, again? Guile <laughs> <laughs> in the first place. You feel what I'm saying? It's just like, Jared Leto again? I, I thought we moved past that. But why? You th he's a great actor. Listen, I wrote down 50. He's a great actor. He's not a great Joker. But okay, you know, but hear me out, hear me out. I wrote 15 reasons why Jared Leto is the best version of the Joker right now. Okay. Is that on the wall behind you? Is that what uh, that no, is? Yeah, no. <laughs> Look, he's appropriately over the top, okay? The next point is he's smarter than Amanda Waller. Well, I mean, look, I, I say this. The Joker we see in the movie is a rendition of the Joker. Now, given with comic books, yes. James, yes. you know very well you can, just like we said, the Lex Luthor obviously was not the Lex Luthor we know, but the bald-headed, right. you know, sinister Lex Luthor. The Lex Luthor they gave us was the young, eccentric, coked-out teenager Lex Luthor yeah. who it was not widely known. So they also gave us the Joker that was not really more, but he was more of the gangster Joker. You know he, what I mean? He, like they He was an it. official crime lord of Gotham, basically. He right. portrayed him as that. And... Listen, uh, what you would call it? And don't you think he has potential for a number of different movies? Mm, is it? No. I mean, I know <laughs> categorically with category. Okay, categorically within the within the comics, yeah. There's there's the amassed, of course. Today, there is three Jokers. There's the three Jokers comics. So there's different sides of the Joker and everything like that. So I slightly agree with you that yes, he could be pinpointed in a lot of feature feature movies off of his character, but I need to see more depth. What we got from the Joker in Justice League, well, shit, did we, no, I'm sorry. We didn't even see him in Justice League. No, we even in it. So, so, so what we got of him for, through Suicide Squad, and is that pretty much it? Was he in Batman yes. versus Superman? No, I don't think he was in no. that. No. Nope. No. So wow. the thing is, the body of work of Jared Leto's character is all based off Suicide Squad. Yeah, but and he's he's the only Joker in the live action <laughs> version of Joker that managed to kill Robin. Yeah, they they allude to that. They never yeah, came out and said was, that in the movie. Right, that was like a trailer excerpt because you saw basically the spray paint on the Robin costume. I remember seeing that. He's in the and universe. I was like, okay. Yeah, he's in he he's in the universe and it's basically after the death in the family comic. So that if, if it's incorporating that type of scene. So it's pretty much the re uh, incarnation of Jason Todd. But it's still him. We're talking about him here. He hasn't done anything in pertinence to the character in Suicide Squad. He was a romantic supporting character in that movie. Like he, he had no dialogue. Exactly. And, and my whole point is, all right, let's go to the overall, what they're doing right now. So they're redoing, they're trying to do Zack Snyder's cut, the, the redemption of the Justice League movie, because even the producers of the movie, uh, they all can see that it was a crock of crap, you know, a big crock of crap, you know what I mean? So the, what they're doing is now, it's almost like all the Snyder fans, and first of all, props to all you Snyder fans out there, because you guys made this happen. There's no way a studio will put up all this money if they didn't believe in it. 
you know, or if they didn't I think did. they wanted it, you know, because, and first of all, Steppenwolf was ass. He looked <laughs> easy. He looked like the oh, yeah. um, Power Rangers uh, villain, like, it, you know, like, so now they're going to be bringing in Dark Side, which we probably should have got originally. But, but how, how much of a presence is Dark Side going to take? I mean, that's true. Is it just going to be like small bits and pieces of Apocalypse? Because normally you wouldn't even have his presence be shown. I think primarily, yeah, it's still still going to be Steppenwolf pretty much as the antagonist in the entire movie, all within the backdrop drop of Apocalypse, showcasing Darkseid in like little mini excerpts. Like how much of a presence is Darkseid going to unfold here? Well, for the movie to actually be good, he needs to have a big presence because if you give me more Steppenwolf is like, here we go again. That's just like if they redid the Wonder Woman movie and they give us more Aries. And it's oh, more crap. Yeah. You know, like, hey, let me give you more crap and <laughs> throw more crap at you. You know, like, right. come on. Like, DC, DC, you guys should have chilled out. You gave us a great uh, Shazam. Shazam, I thought was great. I thought that was DC finally getting it right. Aquaman, right. okay, not bad. Um, uh, Wonder Woman, pretty good. You know, so instead of just going right for the throat... Instead of trying to redo the throat, step back. They should have stepped back, told other stories that led and redid the Justice League later, another movie, almost acting like abolish the first movie. Right. Now, I'm a little empathetic towards Zack Snyder in, in his case. I've realized that, you know what I'm saying, he was dealing with a, tra a tragedy within his family, right. had to step away. They brought in Joss Whedon, and pretty much Joss Whedon did what Joss Whedon does, which is what he did to Marvel movies. He tried to enlighten it with a little bit of humor. He fucked up every character with depth and mm -hmm. pretty much made the movie completely shitty. And from, from the actor's take, a completely different movie than what was sold to them when they read the script and what they saw in the final cut. So yeah, in order for a director to get on, scre uh, get on screen and all these TV interviews and everything like that and pretty much tell the gathering audience that you were robbed. You were robbed of a great movie. And in light of this, $70 million, if not more, gets pumped into this reshoot. $70 million on top of what was spent with the original Justice League movie. I mean, right. it's balls by a studio. It's balls by the fans that actually like let it happen. And the fact that it's being done into a four hour possible runtime movie, I mean, it could be ridiculous or it could be magnificent. But uh, to me, this is a big gamble because remember back in the day, we used to have the VHS tapes. We used to get stuff. It used to get the extra edition of the extra disc that showed you the behind the scenes or extra footage. That's almost like what this is. Like this, re to me, this whole redoing the Justice League movie is like giving us that bonus disc. But you know the story. It's not like the story is going to totally change. They're just going to uh, expound on it. You know what I mean? So I mean, do, but do but do we know, do we know the story? Do like because we seem to think that it's going to be a different story. Yeah. How many hours is the movie going to be? They saying four plus four hours plus runtime. What? Wow. Might have might as well be a miniseries. Yeah. Yeah. yeah but, that, don't you think HBO could have split that into a forty-five minute series? So I, know, hey, I agree with that. I agree, as opposed to giving us one long movie, yeah. just like with uh, The Boys. That'd be cool if they gave us like half an hour yeah. or an hour episodes. That would be dope. That might actually redeem it. That's a good yeah. idea. It should, a, it, to, to be honest, it should be a miniseries. If you're going to provide a cliffhanger leading into and basically the reincarnation of Superman, and and from what we, from what we were told, the way that Superman was reincarnated in the Justice League was the wrong way. So there's a whole new way that he's going to be reincarnated because he puts on a black suit and he's pretty much running around like a fucking madman. So that's going to happen. But, or is but, it? But, but, a big but, Henry Cavill was the only one that refused to do reshoots. So they have to work with the footage they originally had. So his whole black suit is probably going to be computer. Uh, generated, you know, like the whole mustache, which is which is easy. A uh, Photoshop, uh, basically taking a blue suit and adding it into black. That's fine. I mean, we're still gonna get this. <laughs> Hi, right. hey kids! I know uh, you're videotaping me. <laughs> now over here in the you, corner. Are you kids okay? <laughs> <laughs> like, like we might still get that. 
I mean, if I it, the the biggest turn away is that that's in the beginning of the movie. So if that's on screen, it's an automatic turn off. But listen, way, guys, if they want to redeem the whole movie, just give us that first scene done right, and then everybody will be like, "All right," because no one's so sad to say these people that do all those uh, kids that do those bootleg videos, they're so much better than what Hollywood is doing. Hollywood's oh, getting yeah. the deep and these kids, these kids are doing a better job. Like, did you see the one with uh, Solo? They actually put Harrison Ford's face yeah. on uh, the actor. It looked a hundred percent legit. Like these did kids, you see the one, did you see the face. Irishman one where they put De Niro's face. His young face? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Oh they did it better than the production studio. So come on, guys. Step up your Hire some of these kids out there. And I say kids, being an old man, but hire some of these people out there that can do stuff better than what you're paying the big guns to do. That's true. But James, here's a question for you. The Zack Snyder fan base uh, has been compared to or is worse as toxic as... Star Wars? Crew. Yeah. I mean, to be honest, we're probably going to get shitted on a lot for this interview as much as possible. I mean, we're trying to sugarcoat it, or we're not. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, it, I want the movie to succeed. I do. I really do. You know what I'm saying? If it, if if it's a totally different product than what we got the last time, if there's an appearance of the Green Lantern, which wasn't there wasn't an appearance of the Green Lantern. If there's an appearance of Deathstroke, which was basically alluded to after Batman, ver I mean after uh, Justice League, how big of a role is that going to play into? It, does it coincide with the creation of the Injustice League or or the Legion of Doom or anything like that? Like, how big is this going to take? If you're trying right. to fit all this into a four-hour movie, what what can we see? But again, but the point is, what's blowing my mind and I don't understand is, like you said, is this going to be an entirely different movie or is it going to be the movie we saw expounded? Because if this is an entire new movie, I don't know how you can do that without Henry Cavill reshooting his scenes, without literally everyone going back into full-blown production, without different, it's almost just like they're taking, it's almost just like, um, if you have all these leftovers from Thanksgiving and you're like, oh, a week later, I want to make something good to eat. So you take a little bit of the turkey. So, you know what I mean? It's just like they're throwing yeah. stuff together, hoping it, it sticks. So will people see that as a patchwork? Man, I, I would hope not. I mean, because there's so much money on the table with this. And it's not going to be in theaters. It's not like, okay, we're releasing the Snyder Cut and then it's going back in the movie theaters for a four-hour release. This shit's going straight to TV. So how many people have lost a little bit of faith when they saw the Justice League the first time? I mean, I realize that that Snyder, that Snyder fan base is tremendously strong. They're going to be there opening week. How many times are they going to watch this movie? Is it going to be bigger than uh, bigger than like Mulan be basically being set forth and put on streaming for the first time? Is it going to be big, bigger than? Uh, the 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 other couple of movies was it was it Trolls and everything that got released on streaming and everything like that made all this type of money and good? whatnot, right. or or for like Mulan to basically have premium access and then making the money that they made shit Borat two just came out and made more money than Mulan did even with that thirty dollar plus range wow scale that, that it did like within that first week so I mean it's going to make money is it going to make the money back that possibly Warner Brothers wanted, that remains to be seen. Yeah, but listen, they have to re recoup that money that they lost from the first film. Yeah, but how much money did they lose? It was, if it was, was it minimal? No, I mean, no, it, it wasn't, was, right. it, it wasn't was, a it wasn't dud. A, it wasn't a box office failure. It didn't, know, it didn't do anywhere near what they expected it to do, but right. it was more of a critic's Rotten Tomatoes failure than it yeah. was actually numbers game because numbers it did pretty good actually it didn't do great yeah. but it did pretty good. Yeah, the the film reviews and the artistic credibility is the problem that everybody had. And the thing is, when it came out, not only from the director to the producers to the actors that basically said that this this project totally not what what we, what we wanted. That's not the film that I acted for for that many months and pretty much got sold on the fact that this was going to be pretty much the reason that a, a connected universe could have possibly happened in DC. And could it possibly happen after this movie? Another reason that we don't know. Hmm. But don't you think DC would be good to just do, just tell stories and do one-offs, you know, because they think I think well. so. 
I think so. I think I think that's their that's going to be their gimmick now. Just do these singular singular movies that are basically based off of one offs from the comics and everything like that. You can have two Batmans going on at the same time. It's still going to it, it's a super uber popular character that's going to make the money that it's going to make. It doesn't matter if Ben Affleck and Robert Pattinson are basically doing the movies at the same time. Because now with the ability of the multiverse within Marvel and DC, you could do this shit. Nobody cares anymore. Yeah, I've come to realize nobody gives a shit. Nobody gives a shit. Make the money. You know what I'm saying? Like, like if you're going if you're going to have Clark Kent, you might as well have uh, uh what's his name, Zal L uh, from Earth Two. Have the black Superman coming down. That's Michael B. Jordan. And give me crypto. I need I need crypto. Get crypto I need in there. That is cute. That can fly. And the outside has eye laser beams. I need crypto. You can do all these shit at the same time. The multi multiverse is now in play. Nobody cares anymore. Yeah, now let me ask you a question though. But uh, what do you think? Let, let, what do you think the ramifications would be if this dropped after all this money spent? And it's still a failure or a flop. Where does that put DC? I, does that are they just right back where they started? Does that put them in a worse position? If this movie does not live up to expectations, what do you think is going to happen? I I don't necessarily think so. I mean, for now, for the people that did that movie, y'all need to go into hiding for the next six years because <laughs> for y'all to talk all that shit and then this bombs just go away. Like like Jason Momoa too. <laughs> Go away. I know how po- I know how popular you are. Just just leave for a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Just go back underwater and everything like that. <laughs> but the thing is, DC made a plan after after the if you want to call it after the release of Justice League to basically do the movies in a different type of way. So when Shazam came out, Wonder Woman came out, and Aquaman came out. Like these were better movies than what that connected universe that they were trying to make tended to be. Right. So it was it was kind of like it, but it was kind of like, yeah, we've already made the plans going forward. Do we start a connected universe if this shit succeeds? Well, I, and I think right. I think they have to learn through, through trial and error. I think we like we said on uh shows before, I think DC they were trying to catch up to. Marvel by Marvel was putting out the Avengers. They were putting out Endgame. They were putting out Infinity War. Yeah. So DC was like, oh, they're merging. Let's let's merge all this. So they they should have not tried right. to catch up with them. They should have taken their time to build up to the Justice League. You know, and yeah. I think again, that's part of the what the flaw I see in doing this reshoot. Now I don't get don't get me wrong. Like I the whole uh uh, Zack Snyder thing. I do have compassion for him, and it uh, does make me feel good that he's going to have his vision realized. But yeah. is it too late? Mm-hmm. Possibly, you no. Know? P- possibly, you know what I'm saying. But you know, I guess through his body of work, people believe in the fact of his filmmaking with 300 and Watchmen, and well, not I can't say Sucker Punch, but <laughs> you know what I'm saying. But basically, basically looking at it. Yeah, he could possibly save this shit. And but you know, trying to get off topic of what Joss Joss Whedon made, you could scrap it. If you did if you did it that well, it's a four hour movie and everybody's like, yo, this shit is genius. Like the way this shit played out. You mean yeah, you could scrap is, that movie. Batman isn't a punk in this movie where Batman does more right. than just get his butt kicked. Oh my god, <laughs> yo. Man, <laughs> I've never seen Batman so shook in a movie in all my life in Batman versus Superman. Yo, it, it, like, like you're talking about a man that's executedly planned every single scenario whatsoever. Like I saw, like you're not supposed to see fear in this man, and he turns out to have like the most fear possible between, <laughs> you know, what I'm saying between <laughs> Batman, Batman versus Superman, and he the Justice like, League. It's where's Robin when you need him? Laugh track. He was killed, <laughs> he was killed by Leto. <laughs> uh, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, know what? And I'm not, you know what I think would make this movie good. You know how they're making cameos? They need to bring in some JoJo characters. Kind of like this. A little yeah. pose. <laughs> I just got off topic because I just finished <laughs> the JoJo series. And James, you need to get with it. If you haven't watched JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, uh, you need to watch it because I know you, man. I know what you like. You will love it. you got to watch it. I actually know one of the voice actors for JoJo. 
Um, Matthew David Rudd, he, he's the voice of uh, Luca. Oh, from the uh, from the six year, uh, the Golden Wind. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. No. Hey, hey, he told me he's told me about the series. I need to watch it for myself. But yo, yo any show that actually plays Joe to see freaking you at yeah. the end is a, is a show you have to watch every episode. They start up every time I close my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Do I want to see this? <laughs> yes, you do. Yes, you do. <laughs> but anyway, to get back on topic, I mean, honestly, like, I want this movie to do well. Like, look, I've always, when I was a kid, and I've mentioned this before. I'm about to say, you're wearing a hat and you've been shitting on it. <laughs> I got this hat before, I got this hat before the movie dropped. I was about to burn oh. it. I saw it and I was like, you know what? Maybe in like two or three years they're gonna do a remake of it. And what do you know? Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Check, please. God damn. So, so, so overall, with the return of all these characters, a lot of characters that weren't even carried into Justice League in the beginning, could it could it be a success? Absolutely. Could it suck? Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? So HBO Max. Warner Brothers DC is pumping a lot of movie in this shit to not have it fuck up. You know what they need, James, Jorge? In this way, they need a surprise. You know now with the internet, there's no such thing as surprises. Like, you know, now that Spider-Man 3 is supposedly going to have uh, Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield, like, great, but the surprise would be gone. It would be great if in this movie they actually dropped Green Lantern. Because you don't That's what I'm saying. How dope would that be? Because that couldn't make it. Just that one move, just to see him come from the sky, that could that could make it. You know what I mean? That, that would and, be. And, and, and it's still Ryan Reynolds. Oh, oh God! <laughs> How dope would that be? And he's like, "Hey guys, am I late for the party?" Like that something would, like that would be great. That, that would be make... dope. All the money they're putting that... in the shoots, all the money on special effects, just give us that. But, That's all we need. Yep. <laughs> Fuck all that extra cinematography and everything like that, those reshoots and whatnot. Just had that battle scene where all the lanterns, Zeus and all of them are fighting Steppenwolf, have Ryan Reynolds preclude into that scene, and this whole movie is just fine. Yeah, Marvel yeah, we'll will not let that happen. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? No. Who's to say he they haven't already done it? No, they might have. That would be a surprise that would actually make it. That one move could actually make the whole project make all the money worth it. So, Ryan Reynolds, if you have any people listening to our lowly podcast, please give us that surprise because you will save the franchise. That's good. Pretty like much. It. Well, right, I man. mean, listen, guys, I mean, there's so much going on now. Like, all we could do is cross our fingers and, I mean, hope that Jared Leto isn't on the screen for more than five minutes because then I think you got a hip movie. We just don't need to see a lot of him <laughs> yeah. as Jorge starts to fume. Yes. Basically, that end scene with Lex Luthor, Deathstroke, possibly even Wonder Woman's Cheetah, her arch nemesis, and then maybe him. And then you'll have your little like Legion of Doom to end the movie. Boom. You know they exist. And then Leto, you know what I'm saying? Just, just have it there. That would be so dope. You have, like if you see like a formation of all the villains within, within uh, that, that are the Justice League's foes, Forming up at the end of the movie, that would be dope. That would if be it's the movie. not just that. If it's not just Deathstroke, that could be your cameo with Jared Leto. No. That's well, it. For, them, on, them on the yacht and the movie freeze frame done. Yep. That's and it. I think I think they need someone light skin in the movie, like James, like you. If you oh, came in, like. Oh. We needed a light-skinned hero, you know? Everyone's tired of Will Smith, you know? Look. It's just like, we need a new light-skinned brother to save us from all these Tyrese's and Jervis Peterson's. <laughs> I, don't, I, I, I don't know how to break this to you, but there has never been no such thing as a light-skinned superhero, ever. Hancock. Ever. <laughs> ever. The, the drunk, you know what? Wow. There's not, you, I, now I'm gonna think about, has there ever been a light-skinned hero? 
Yo, never. Tell your independent animators and comic book girls to make you a hero. I'm Listen, dude, like you're people, you need to you need to be representing your people. <laughs> what do you mean? You mean? <laughs> what do you mean you mean? <laughs> James is like, you know what? If all y'all <laughs> our our lack of melanin asses have not seen no glory. <laughs> well, guys, great show. Uh I'm just gonna end it with some uh JoJo poses, you know. So <laughs>